Today I'm going to show you how I clean a thurible from this to this. This method is particularly helpful if your thurible has been a little neglected like this one. The best way to ensure your thurible is always clean is regular maintenance which we will look at at the end of this video. This method will be useful if your thurible is brass if your thurible is copper, nickel, gold or some other metal plate, this method may not work for you and the chemicals or harsh cleaning may damage your thurible. To clean the thurible, I use a few items. Some brushes, I use a different brush for different chemicals, some latex gloves, a flathead screwdriver, pliers, steel wool, brasso or some other kind of brass polish, acetone and a couple of thick buckets of smaller and bigger size. I also have Barkeeper's Friend. It is helpful but you could probably get away without it. You will also want some soft clean rags and I tend to put down newspaper when using the acetone. The first thing we need to do is to clean the fire pit. This is the part of the thurible which contains the coals. I find the easiest way to remove the resin is to use a flathead screwdriver to scrape it from the surface of the fire pit. If not regularly cleaned out after each use, resin can build up on the surface. Some suggest that when the fire pit is not clean, it can produce unpleasant odours. Now that most of the resin has been removed, I'm going to give it an extra scrub. You could probably get away with using it as it is, but today I thought I would give it a good clean. To the fire pit, I am adding some Barkeeper's Friend. This is a brass cleaner which can be purchased from the supermarket relatively cheaply. I'm going to add some water and let it soak for a minute before giving it a scrub with a scourer. Barkeeper's Friend was invented after a chemist Noticed how clean his pot was after cooking rhubarb. This formulation was then developed. It is excellent for cleaning uncoated brass and in this case, softening up some of that leftover resin. I recently read something from an Orthodox priest who said that the fire pit is like the womb of the Blessed Virgin, which contains the spark of Christ. This idea certainly gives some motivation to keeping it suitably clean. Now that the fire pit is clean, it's time to move on to the thurible. I find it much easier to clean and polish the thurible by breaking it down into different parts. It can get rather difficult otherwise with the chains and so on. I know it can seem like a pain, but the extra effort is well worth it. You can see how much resin has built up, not just under the lid, but also where the fire pit sits. Next I'm going to clean the base. I'm going to use again the flathead screwdriver as a scraping tool to remove most of the resin. Again, keeping your thurible clean regularly should avoid this problem. I think sometimes if the lid is not kept clean, the resin heats up, liquefies and moves to the bottom of the base. For this next step, I have put down some newspaper to help keep the surface clean. I'm now going to take some acetone to remove the rest of the resin and give the base a wipe down. I have tested different kinds of spirits, but I have found acetone works the best. It is important to follow the safety instructions. Acetone is highly flammable and toxic. Make sure any flame source is far removed Use in a well ventilated area. Masks, gloves and eye protection are also recommended. 
Here I'm applying the acetone to a rag and using that rag to wipe off the residue. I decided to move the base to a bucket while I continued cleaning the base with acetone. In the end, it was easier to pour a little in and give it a scrub with a brush before wiping down with a rag. Next time I will start with the bucket. I will also wipe down the outside of the base as this will make it easier to polish later on. Since I already have the acetone out, I'm now going to clean the top of the thurible. You can see how quickly the resin comes off as I pour on the acetone. As before, I'm going to give it a good scrub with a brush, then wipe down with a rag. Don't forget to clean the chains of the thurible. These easily build up with residue and can make the thurible difficult to open as it becomes sticky. Not to mention, it helps the celebrant keep his hands clean. For the chains, I just swish them in the acetone, wipe them off, then give them a quick rinse with water. I tend not to put polish on them as it is difficult to get the polish off. The celebrant won't be happy if he ends up with brass polish all over his hands in the middle of mass. As with all parts of the thurible, after the acetone treatment, I let it dry before rinsing the parts under clean water. This is to remove any residue from the thurible, which can give a very bad smell the next time it is used and help prevent any toxic combination of chemicals when it comes to the polishing stage. When you are finished with the acetone, it cannot be put down a drain. When using small amounts, I have set it out in a safe place to evaporate, which it does fairly quickly. In this case today, I heard that used acetone can also be poured back into the container and that the residue will sink to the bottom. Since I didn't have much left, I'm going to see how that goes. Be careful what you put the acetone in because it can melt some plastics. Always be sure to follow your local laws in the disposal of acetone, as it cannot be placed in the regular rubbish nor the drain or ground. Having let the acetone dry, then rinsing the parts under fresh water, I'm going to give it another clean. I'm going to clean the base and the lid of the thurible with Barkeeper's Friend. This step probably could be skipped, but I have Barkeeper's Friend around for other uses. I figure it might help clean areas that are harder to get to with the polish and ultimately make it easier once it comes time to put the polish on. You could always skip this step and see how it works for you. Having thoroughly rinsed the thurible parts with clean water, it is now time to polish. I take some Brasso and apply with a soft, clean cloth. I have found a toothbrush can also be helpful for those difficult to reach areas. Then, using a clean cloth, buff off the polish. And there we have our polished base. And now I repeat the process for the lid. While you need to clean the inside of the thurible, you only need to polish the outside. Now 
that all the parts have been cleaned and polished, it's time to put it all back together. To make sure your thurible stays clean and to make it easier to polish next time, there are a few tips that I've heard. First, ensure the fire pit is emptied and scraped out after every mass. After mass, I have also found it helpful to wipe the thurible down inside and out with 100% isopropyl alcohol. This prevents the buildup of resin. Again, make sure to follow the safety instructions and remember it is highly flammable. If you then give it a regular clean once a month, it should be much easier and quicker to maintain. And now we have a nice clean thurible suitable for use at the holy sacrifice of the mass. I hope you have found this video helpful and if you have any tips for cleaning a thurible, please comment below.